Today we got Mr. Dizzy Rascal, bro. Come How on. you doing? You good? Come on. I'm good, bro. This is this is good. I don't know. We've been bantering before we even got in here, man. I know that you've done Glastonbury and all these massive shows. Mm. 20 years of music industry. I just hope you're not intimidated by both of us. Oh, oh no, nah, man. I'm intimidated. You might know in shorts today. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I got it wrong. I'm thinking, what? What? what am I, is this? Is it me? Have I got it wrong today? No, no. I mean, the outfit's hard. I'm not gonna lie. And the way you rolled up as well was. I'm like, okay. Well, I need. To, I need. To, I need to get to that level. At some point, I need to get I'm to that. Sure, man. You keep you're gonna get that podcast money, man. You, you can keep there's, doing your thing. There's a lot of white guys that sing your songs on dance floors drunk and get the lyrics wrong. I'm one of those guys. Yeah, but, but mate, obviously, you're the guys that pay, bruv. Keep coming. Come keep on. coming. Keep I can't, coming. When today I was reminding myself of how many songs I've actually listened to over the years that you've done, That's and I was like, I was like, oh, I knew it was you, but then actually thinking we were gonna talk today. I was, I'm a little bit intimidated. No, I was like, cause in my head, I was like, every time I've had, you know, I guess back in the day, well, even now when you go through either something in your life where you want to feel motivated or whatnot, you listen to tracks. Yeah. And I, when I used to go running, I used to Bro, try I, and I love that, you know, in. I love that. Cause there's people's music that I listen to that I get motivation yeah. for gym or whatever. Or so it was future. Yeah, or, yeah, or, yeah. or I, was, I was playing uh, Jeezy's first album the yeah. other day as so I was like rolling into that fuck motivation. It's just, it, but the music does actually like make you want to hustle and just like get on with shit. It keeps you more. And also, I was like East London, mm. London boy. Yeah, yeah. You said a bit of, of a rascal. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, like yeah. you're like, oh shit. So I was around motivate there. you exactly. Yeah. It was so nice. I told to... my cousins so I was around there. You was young, always around there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's it like? You're gonna go back on stage in in March. Uh, what, the old two? Yeah, old two. Uh, 20 years of Diz a Boy in the Corner, 20 boy years of Dizzy corner. Rascal. Boy in the Corner. We yes, sir. Yeah. yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it, man. This, I'm, I'm all relaxed about it now because yeah. I, don't, I, I don't get excited till it's time, you know what I mean? But the, the thing we're going to be doing for it, the, the production and the setup, yeah. it's already gone through that already, been planning that and all that. So I know it's just, it's not going to be like an ordinary show. I know how much it means to like generations of people, but especially my generation. Yeah. So they deserve something decent like very 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 special like and i, I, I want to do something that has the same kind of impact as i don't know you, you see like the um the daft punk show there's, yeah. there's this this um famous daft punk show that everyone went to at coachella that, that at the time nothing like that had ever been seen so that's that's kind of what i want to do not that show but the that it would be a show that visually no one's seen before it's in that's march on, yeah march You're about yeah, the tickets are going quick as well. You've done really, yeah. really well. Yeah, so yeah, no, it's, it's moving, man. It's my class. I know how much it, and it's, it, we're still still promoting it. To be fair, a lot of people still don't know about it. It will go off, man. With and the it, with the production, sorry, how weird are you gonna get? Like, I, I like seeing madness. Do you know what I mean? Are you looking to get things? When I mean weird, but you know how like yeah. no, no, old school videos. Yeah, you see yeah. him getting just some madness. You're like, what's going on? But this is sick. It's. I wouldn't say weird. It's it's gonna be. Uh, What's the word? Obviously entertaining. That's the first word that comes out. That's, that's stupid. It's obviously gonna be entertaining. It's gonna be uh entertaining. Yeah, but I'm trying to think of something. Like it's gonna be some nostalgic more. vibes as well for people. It'll be not it'll just not naturally be nostalgic because of because I mean it's 20 years old. But as far as the setup, it'll be futuristic. That's the word that I would should have okay, come okay. Futuristic. Yeah, because okay, we're 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 celebrating the past. But we want it to be groundbreaking. That's the thing, groundbreaking. That's what we're going for. 20 years is a long time. And so much has changed across that. I mean, it wasn't, it doesn't seem that long ago to me. We were buying CDs, getting right. like albums. And then we've had like this Spotify thing. What's it been like navigating this journey over the last 20 years? It's, you, bro, I came out before YouTube. Oh, snap. You know what I mean? When <laughs> that, was this? 2003. Three. Yeah, but a lot of the stuff I was making, I was making. Um, like making the music on that from like 2001. And how old were you then? How old are you now? Sorry. I'm um, 38. I have to think about that. Yeah. 30, I just turned yeah. 38 in September. So yeah, I, I was young and the game's changed so many times since. Like, you had, um, I, I cut my original stuff onto dub plates. The first, first thing I put over was a mini disc. Yeah. I cut my music onto a mini disc, then dub plates. Then you had for it to be put out on CDs. And we're not we're not gonna forget about all the people that burn it that used to burn my album onto the CDs. <coughs> I'd I'd man that come and bring CDs yeah, for me yeah. to sign. Yo, can you sign this for my little brother, please? And I'm looking at it, it's like, bro, this is like a this is a blank CD, yeah, bro. I, I never I never you did that. that. And you sound you know what I mean? It? Like, but that... it is it is where it is though. What are you saying? LimeWire, LimeWire. Yeah, it was like, like, nah, nah, I never heard of it. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's one I, I never went on that. 
I don't know why. I was still into CDs at that time. Mm. I went big on the internet either, personally, like, so it was that. And, it, and then record vinyls were still about because I put my stuff out on white labels and all that. And then you had the downloads, which is a... Uh, that, that do you remember, you do you remember MySpace? And on your MySpace, I don't know if you had MySpace. Yeah, I had a MySpace, MySpace, MySpace. on your MySpace yeah. page, you had like an opening track. You had that as well. Did you have that? I had MySpace, but it's, but it's crazy. I can't remember... Much about it. Much about it, yeah. You yeah. could customise like the HTML. You could do a like, basic code. In B-Bar, I remember you used to send people your love. And like, I'd be at college like, where's my love to the girls? And then they send you like a little- Yo, heart. you were active, bro. You like, you said, what, H what HT? HTML. See that, all that stuff there, I didn't even know what the fuck that You're shit like, was, just, bro. I'm just making music. I just yeah, that's, that's, that's what I was on, yeah. But you, but you still have to try and get with what's going on to an extent. I got onto Instagram early though. I got okay. onto that. I was in LA and I was with Snoop. And he he was doing like he just like I was with him and he kept doing with his phone. I'm like, what's he what's he doing? And he, he said, stand there, stand there. He took a picture of me and took it up. These times it was only like ten filters. Yeah, it was you couldn't even comment. You could only like. So how old were you when you met Snoop? Oh, this this was like uh, I don't even know where was I. I was in my early twenties because this was like so around this would have been out when when you were. Oh no, this this is this is around two thousand and. 10 or something. Okay, so say like 10, 11. East London boy, mm. you do all this music, album comes out, you're yeah. meeting people like Snoop now. What was that, what was that feeling like? Like obviously you would have listened to Snoop back in the day when yeah, you were younger. That's the first album I proper got into was the Dogfather. Dogfather. So yeah, that yeah. that one that was my show to be around Snoop. And you see when someone is you say we say they say don't meet your heroes. Yeah. He's the opposite. Really? Yeah, like he's exactly how like he's blessed, he give you a zoo. Like and just call you, come, come, come and you just jam with him. I feel like rah, that's Snoop, and he treated you like good. Yeah, and he's just like he's the, he's the guy. I've got a picture of Snoop, me and Snoop, on my mantelpiece, bro. Like, not, not, like on yeah, where yeah, the TV yeah. unit thing there. It's up there. He signed the CD for me Rah. as well. Smoking like, the like, blunt with him would be. John, I'm still a fan. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Like, yeah, yeah, of course. I, I still can't get on with weed. If I smoke a joint, I just get too hungry, too stoned. Yeah. Like but if someone like that said, "Hey, I'll do it out of pressure." And I get worried. People are like, hey, do you want to smoke a bit of weed? I'll be like, yeah. Even Bro, I stopped smoking weed twice. And the two times I started smoking weed again, because I was at a festival backstage and Snoop was there and offered me a zoo. <laughs> can't say and no. I can't say no. What are you going to say? Yeah. There's only one time on a podcast, on, on his GGN thing, which at the time I didn't know it was a podcast. It was early in the game. Okay. He offered me something on, on, on the screen and I got a bit dizzy. I didn't know, but I'd had a bit, a bit of drink and I'd, I'd been smoking off the camera. You know? But the two times I quit smoking... Like, yeah, he just handed me a suit. I, I, would, I think I was with Glastonbury and some, what was another If you offered me one, I'd definitely do it. You, 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 you smoked a joint with someone big as well, innit? Do you know what? This is my claim to fame. Yeah. I got dragged along. Well, I didn't get dragged on. My mate said, do you want to go see the game? So wow. I was in, I can't remember where we were. I think it was like Brixton or something. Yeah. And some guy passed a, a joint to him and he did this thing with a bottle of Cavazier and he would pull someone up from the crowd. They'd neck the bottle. Then as he went to hand it back to the guy, I snatched it. That's so how I had feel. Some, I was like 16, 17. You want to be careful doing that, man. You, know, you don't know what was in people's zoots, you know? People lace their shit, you know? At 17, I could recover from whatever it was. Yeah, right. And right. I was, and then I joke with Darren. I, I see him on TikTok. I ask my mate. They go, what do you mean he's your mate? I said, I smoked a joint with the game. You know what's funny though? If I was at that concert, right? What he done is such a white boy thing to do, <laughs> to just like grab it. Whereas if I was there, I'd be like, nah, nah, I'm not, not sure. I'm not like, grabbing yeah, a zoot off him, bro. You know, it's, man, hey, at my shows at one point, yeah, people used to throw zoots on stage. Like, especially if I was abroad, like they'll they fr just throw the zoots on stage. Yeah, it's like, like, it was like an honor for them for you to smoke their weed. That's it's kind of cool. It's a bit scary. You could tell the upbringings how different they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where I'm, where I'm from, people just worried about like a stone chipping their paint on their car. <laughs> right. That's like the worst thing that could happen in Windsor. You guys got to worry about like people being evil in East London and getting jacked and all of that. But you know what? And I don't know if you ever struggled with this. Now, obviously I'm nowhere near like your level when it comes to like, the people you, you've you met or you meet and whatnot. He's had to tell me to like calm down in certain scenarios. He's like, Darren, you're sounding a bit aggressive. And I'm like, I, I'm not sounding aggressive. This is just me. You kind of had to be like that in East London or Tottenham or yeah, whatever. So it's hard to, to shake get it off, innit? And you're trying to shake it off. You yeah. know what I'm talking about, innit? Did yeah. you struggle with that at all? Some people might say I still do. Because right? <laughs> <laughs> let's yeah. say you're like, you're obviously an incredible creative, you're an artist, you're all of these like amazing things that make you who you are. But then people put you in front of a camera and they're like, oh, don't swear, don't offend anyone, don't do this. And you're like, that's not the skill set that got you to where you are. They just expect you to adapt to it. Yeah, it's crazy because to, to, to add to your point, yeah, 
I got one of them jobs where I, I got to be myself. So I, don't, I didn't have to be anything other than the way I was, except if I'm doing obviously bait mainstream stuff, yeah. I'll just try and talk less. So I don't swear or act so up. The chances, you know I mean? <laughs> the chances, yeah. The chances. That's, that's I've always been in. Just in the past, just throughout my whole career, I've just not not said so much because I I think stuff. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah, got yeah. views. I feel I feel things. I yeah. like, but I I am also aware that not everything that, that comes out of my mouth is as important as I think it is. And like, is it some and the way you feel about something one day is might not be the way you feel about it in two weeks, but you still got to deal with yeah. what you said. But the difference is when you say that one thing incorrectly, it's on TV and that's what they think of you. Well, so you well, well, well in this day and age, we're in the day and age where everyone's fucking dying to wake up and be pissed off with people. Yeah. So you go online, see some shit. Oh my God, he did this. Bruv. Fucking running off their mouths and getting upset about some shit that was none of their fucking business in the first place. I, I did a I did a, a video of mine went viral the other week. I was yeah. literally going to the public and just asking them, "Yo, what is a woman?" And people whoa, whoa, were like, whoa, 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 "What's happening?" Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> so <laughs> so what like, is your opinion? Were stressing what? out. They like, they didn't know how to answer. They were like, "What do you think a woman is?" I said, "When I think of a woman, I think of my mum. In it, I think of warmth, love, someone that nurtures and whatnot." But then like the transgender community kind of came after me and be like, you're attacking transgender. I was like, I was, just, they, they I was can just paint asking a question. They can paint you with that picture. And if people take stuff out of context, I mean, your career, you've gone through, like you say, before YouTube, Instagram, early adopter. I didn't get a business page till like 2017. But you look at all these different things, then Twitter, suddenly people are digging up tweets from 10 <laughs> years ago for people. And you're probably like, mate, I was stoned. I meant it in this context. And people are like, no, 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 no. Because politics has changed. Like, also, when you're really well known, you always have to almost look at everything through a lens of, is this person trying to trip me up? Is this person trying to come for me? Have you ever had anything yeah. where on socials or even in real life, people have like tried to bait you or just try and get you in trouble? Yes, all the time. All the time people always, people always try me. Yeah. Was, yeah, but I just, I don't know, bro. I was just, the way I deal with it, I just kind of just try and stay out of the way. Yeah. And, and, and that's not really a good way. You shouldn't be like that. I should be able to just say how I feel and say what I want. I've got about I like having, I mean, I'm actually one of the easiest people to talk to, but I'm like, the real me is very unfiltered. Like I'll say, like, I have all sorts of banter. Like. But the thing is, and like, this is what I mean, like from a culture perspective of like, yeah. say where you were raised, where you were raised, where I was raised, the difference is when you are yourself or say you're talking a bit loud, even my dad, for example, my dad's a, he's a refugee, but they came as a refugee. When they're talking to me in Turkish from the outside, some, not you, but someone else is going, hey, why is your dad angry? I'm like, he's not angry. He's just, yeah, it's the same he's just with talking like, with Afri passion. Africa and Africans, Nigeria, yeah. Jamaicans. Talking with that. passion. So, yeah. And when someone doesn't know that, it almost like there's a bit of fear. So they misunderstand. Yeah, because it's so, yeah. But some, sometimes that, that's a class thing too, like you're saying as well. Because like, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know, Cockney people might come across more aggressive or un true. uncouth. Compared to, <laughs> uncouth, compared yeah. to other, compared to other, but then I've been around some posh wrongans as well, bro. I've seen like I've I've, I've been done. I mean, they're the worst, bro. I've yeah, the rugby yo, boys. I've seen some Smith stuff, mate. To a lot of rugby they, guys, that I'm like, Ross Smith. I don't know about these guys, you know. You know, bro. I fundamentally, I've clocked here that everyone's actually the same. Everyone's actually slightly into the same shit. I've got the same basic needs, and some people are really nice, and some people are cunts. We got yeah. more in common yeah. with each other than we do not in common. And that's what no one ever thinks Overall, about. Yeah. yeah. But a lot of the time, people don't have access to bo both sides for obvious reasons. Even it? that Bishop Tash game out at the weekend, you've got two football fans screaming at each other, throwing stones, shower. guys, you both 90% love football. <laughs> yeah, that's 10% true. different teams. But they're like out there. I was in I was in Turkey last week with my dad. He's a big football, I was a big football fan as well. And we're at Bishop Tash versus Fenerbahce, which is like a big derby. Yeah. I'm not sure if you're into football. Are you into your football? Yeah, a bit. But it, it'd be like Millwall and West Ham. Exactly. Which, like which, Controversially to me, I feel like they're the same people. Yeah, they are the same people. You're yeah, right. yeah. What did you support? I, 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 I supported West Ham as a kid. But you know, if, if I'm honest today, yeah, I could just watch any, any good football any game. game. Yeah, any game. Yeah, yeah. And it was just people going crazy because I was like, they're fanatic because they have nothing else in their life mm. where they live. They have nothing else. Maybe similar to people that listen to your music, like they have nothing but music. So everything is, I guess. I think, I think so, because a lot of, like say football is, is tied to their areas as well. So there's a local pride True. a lot of the time. You know what I mean? That's probably why we support West Ham. And it's just a, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. that. And it, but there's just a competitive thing. Football's just competitive anyway. Is, so, yeah. if, even if you have two schools playing against each other, you've got 
people on both sides. Anything that's competitive, you're gonna have but, but football's like the proper it's the working man sport in it as well. Rugby they say it's the the sport for thugs played by like gentlemen. gentlemen. Yeah. Football's the sports gentlemen played by thugs. I remember when you told me that first, I was like, you dick. Today the posh ass. That was a real thing though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, because really the, the like the, the rugby thing is like that's that's a that's a mad boy, that's a mad sport, bro. It, it is a mad sport. Are you you train at the minute? What rugby? Train, like just in general? Oh yeah, yeah. I went to the gym. I made sure I went to gym today before I got in there with you like that. We were out yeah. for Turkish yeah. breakfast. Yeah. yeah. Oh <laughs> shit. Yeah. yeah. No, I went, I went to the gym this morning. So I do, I do a bit of weights and that with like with um with my trainer Alex, and then and I do like my Thai boxing training and all that. You do with, Thai boxing? With Alan Kedal. Yeah. I've yeah? yeah, Been doing it for a long time. Oh, yeah, for real? man. Yeah, yeah. And I, I love boxing as well. There's all do all. I love, I love Thai boxing. Man. I was about to ask you what your kind of things were that you do when you're not involved in either music or touring or whatever it's mainly that so that them things keep me level in my head and all that and it was good because you know when i started doing boxing and all that and really like sparring with like people who could actually fight properly and all that you all that little ego thing or whatever angle you thought you were trying to get out or whatever point you're trying to prove first of all it gets boxed out of you because you're dealing with people that could box properly then you clock the ah oh, the actual boxing unless you're doing competitively you're doing it for money, you're just your career, whatever. It's it's actually more of like a chess thing, almost like. Bro, you know when you think like, oh, again, where we're from or whatever, you get bare people that think they're hard. As in hard, as in like they'll knock you out. But you take that attitude into sparring, which I didn't take that attitude in, but I've sparred with a lot of fighters as well, like in Bali and everything. We do jujitsu, by the way, so oh, we, man, we're into tough, martial man. arts, yeah, yeah. And it gets boxed out of you, like you said. And those guys that think they're bad, man, when they're in there with gloves, boy, that ego just gets stripped yeah, away. quickly, man. And then that, that's the thing you decide if you actually want to learn after that. Because I know some man, their ego won't let them like carry on. I can't be good at this. I'm rubbish at this. Or, or, they, or they'll shoot you, innit? Because if, if, if you got a certain man in there and he's who he is outside yes. and, and you embarrass him in there, it's like, all right, cool. cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, like, outside, yeah? It's that, yeah. Like, Do you ever so. find like having something like Thai boxing, it almost keeps you honest as well. Let's say March, you sell out the O2, you do the biggest event of your life and everyone around you is being like, oh, it's amazing. That was great. We're so proud of you. Then the next day, your gloves down, someone cracks you in the mouth and you're like, okay, this is life. I'm not that big. Like, it's <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's nice to have something. I know personally myself, I like something to go well for me, but I don't want everything in my life to go well for me. Mm. It's nice to have that hardship at training. You might've had a really good time on tour, then you get back and you realize you're unfit and someone's running rounds around you. And suddenly you've got pain in your head of going, I need to get fitter, I need to get better. Yeah. It's my Another challenge is yeah. like to channel all your energies and that. Because if everything in your life is going well, then I feel like we're problem solvers naturally. We need something and it can almost allow you to relax a bit. You've got your, you've got your things going well and then you've got your little tie, but cause you're never, ever gonna master it. You're never gonna hit mastery at martial arts. Yeah, no, there's always a uh, next always level. More. Yeah, always there's more. always someone, and always, always someone who can beat you. Oh, for, yeah. So how often do you train? There, there's, I, I, sometimes I'll be at it three, four times a week, yeah. and then I might go a month with like, oh, fuck that. Were you, are you like, are you extreme in the sense of like, okay, this month is, I've got to make music, I'm in the studio. I try and balance the both. Okay. Because sometimes there's, there's like, like whole, like maybe a whole few weeks or a month where I don't really make music either. Because okay. it's a vibe thing. I'm trying to get, put myself in the world where I just do it more, do it more. So as I get older, you get more comfortable. There's, there's less urgency and shit like that. You know what I mean? We, like, I, we were talking about this. I was like, my biggest dreams were to be able to make some money online, yeah. be recognized for something and like be able to buy a nice car. And when all that happened, it kind of not stressed me out, but I was talking to him. I was like, one of my cousins pulled me out. He goes, oh, you bought yourself a Range Rover. You're getting, out, you're getting comfortable, bruv. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> you're supposed to be like, you're like, it's like, you're supposed to drive nice things, but you, you've got a market. Every time you do something well, yeah, you, you, I would say you treat yourself, don't cheat yourself. You've got, you got to, to be fair, I've got that from Richie Rich. Oh, for real? Rapper, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Song. I listened yeah. to it again the other day. I was like, oh, that's where I got it from. <laughs> anyway, yeah, treat yourself, don't cheat yourself. You have to mark stuff. And sometimes when you're going through fuckery as well, yeah, like, and you've got through something really stressful and you have to you have to hold that. Like, you're going through some shit that everyone, you can't even explain yourself. It's so mad. It's like, you know what? I'm by Ferrari. He just did this. Tell him, go he on, did, tell him. Yeah. Tell him. He didn't get his purple belt, right? He's a blue belt, four strike. Yeah. He's been getting gold medals. He's like, surely if you I know bring, I'm a purple. If belt, I bring man. home two gold medals, I'll get it. He brings home four. He still don't get it. He gets six. He still don't got it. Bob, he's like, okay, champion. Just bought a brand new Range Rover. Yeah, man. He goes, why? I go, 
I didn't get upgrade. I didn't get promoted. Didn't I? I went for a walk near my house, yeah, and I walked past a Range Rover and I walked in there and I was like, you know what, bruv? What, what if I exchange my C class for this? What's gonna happen? He goes, you need to. I said, yeah, let's just do it. I, was, I feel like most men will want the Range Rover over the belt. Right. So. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that's yeah. another thing, right? And I think sometimes, like, not for granted, but like, you know, sometimes like you want to impress. Women can sometimes misconstrue men. Sometimes men want to impress other men and you want that respect from your friend or your mate or whatever, or someone that means a lot to you. In jiu-jitsu, because it's such a combative fighting environment, when you wear your belt, your training partners, you even line up in order. So it's where you stand in the mat, it's everything. So that's a hierarchy to, but yeah. yeah. Like, you know, is I never got that deep. No, because there's two there's two sides of the, um, the MMA training or jujitsu. You've got the ones where you wear, it's not a gi. Gi and no. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. like the judo when I was little, so it's a similar thing, innit? But then I've got like, say like a kettles or whatever, they've got gym. Their man don't wear all that, but they do MMA, they roll around. Yeah. So, okay, so I've never seen that kind of hierarchy. I just know them man are a bit rougher than them man. And you know I mean, there's, there's a bit of that, but I just know that every, that 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 MM, that jujitsu you say is not a joke and it's hard work. I try, I tried it once here, and the person who I rolled with here, I, I, I was bigger than them, two of them, and the way they twist me up, and I never went back, bro, because yeah. it's not it's not about strength, is it? It's about technique and the way. I don't know what hold he did on my legs. I don't know what that was, bro, but I couldn't get out of it. And I said, yeah, you know, well, you know, you know who's at our gym, at Roger Grace's junior. Junior is a black belt. Um, a jungle. jungle. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. one of the boys. Rat, okay. I know he's been doing it. That's it. So I was at that premiere. Yeah. I saw you from the distance. I was about to come and say hi. Yeah. I got stopped. So I couldn't come for and you, you guys disappeared. But I see I see some of the jiu-jitsu guys at the premiere. I was like, yo, what's going on? What's going on? I'm like, what the fuck are these men doing at the premiere? Like, I didn't know you were get I, invited. I don't trust this. jiu-jitsu guys, man. Bro, I don't trust them. You see, you see when you see the air, bro, it's game. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah. nah, nah. Because there's, there's boxing. And that's dangerous anyway. Anyone does any kind of martial arts with jiu-jitsu guys, they, they who, who take pride in putting you on the floor and being able to break your bones at bro. will if you don't if you don't train too you got a bit of a chance if you're fighting someone boxing and standing up you know you don't have to be, have to be a boxer you could just get lucky i say it's like drowning right yeah yeah you're drowning bruv when someone good at jiu jitsu is smothering you you are drowning you're so be fair, actually you know what though tell a lie if you if you've done no training and someone has done any boxing, martial arts, or anything? They, they, they actually do they do stand a better, better chance than you. It's conditioning. The boxer won't let you get close. Yeah, true. Yeah, it's so quick. If they've got their their foot movement, it is, yeah, so it's, it's long. It's I like. Long. There's a lot of people like Guy Ritchie is a black belt. Tom Hardy will get his purpose. I just see soon. that thing. Yeah, well, and like man. it's cool because people are operating, and you can put that into any context. People that are working hard never show you how hard they're working. Yeah. So let's say you come out with a new song, a new album, people go, oh, sick. And I'd love to know more about your creative kind of aspect of it. But you, when I see someone like Tom Hardy, when he gets his purple, I know he's been doing the hours and he will be doing it behind closed doors. And for him, it's very dysfunctional because people can't be normal with him. They're like, oh my God, it's Venom. <laughs> like, you know, whatever it is. Uh, but like for yourself, what is your creative process? Because it, it's very difficult to just sit and be creative. Everyone, yeah. everyone has their ways. What is yours? No, recently, bro, like I've bought big desk for my studio that out in the uh, got a nice studio that got built and kind of at the back of the garden or whatever. Just upgraded it, big desk, SSL speakers, this, that, 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 and like and bought all sorts of old school hardware and everything. Was loving it, cool. And then I just bought a couple of little smaller speakers and put a setup in my kitchen. And now that's where I'm making the beats now. Oh, you're so I spent a like hundred something grand worth of equipment, and then in the end, it's like I've made two good songs in the last couple of weeks or whatever it's in in on, on the kitchen stand, like a day apart. That's so mad. it just yeah, it just it just could be just anything, bro. Like in, in, any be like us forcing. You don't have you realized like when you force to like if you go in your studio maybe you're like okay I need a good track today. And when you force it, it doesn't come out. Not always, nah, or it's, or it's not fun. Some some days you just just it's just there. Like I, I might just be looking for sounds. Like I might just be on splice or whatever, just looking for sounds. Like oh yeah, let me grab that. Let me grab that. And before you know it, so oh, let me try something with that. Let me say, and then you've got a beat on your hands. Just just, but that's not what you intended to do. I just came here to collect a bunch of sounds. So when I come back next time, there's a there's like a little catalog of stuff I can pick from and but a whole beat will come from that. Then actually, oh, right, actually, I feel like writing right now. Like I was watching the, the Queen's funeral and made a song. <laughs> Not about the Queen's funeral, but like I was had the set up there, the kitchen, the TV was there. And I just literally just decided to put those speakers there and then I just got on with it. So it, it's, it's just different. I'm type of, I don't like writing in the studio. 
Bro, I've never been busy cooking beats in the kitchen, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah trust <laughs> random, oh, yeah. Oh, really and it sick. worked like, and I, was, and I don't even like being in the. I don't like writing in the studio. Like, I've never liked it. Like, oh, a bunch of man link up and like we're gonna write something. Now nah, it's pressure. I usually, usually don't. I don't like doing it like that. Yeah, I'm, uh, this is the thing. I've in the UK. I drive a lot more. Yeah. Everything's further apart. But when I'm driving, I come up with ideas. Mm. And then I'm like, I need to voice note someone just to get it out there. Yeah. Because what's annoying is you sometimes trust your brain too much. You're like, I'll remember that. No. And then later on, no. you're like, it's gone. Yeah. And like, obviously I only make fucking stupid videos on social media, but like, if I don't have an oh, idea- You write books, bruv. Yeah, I start, yeah, I start, <laughs> beat, that, yeah. I start beating myself up. I'm like, you've not been creative today. Yeah. And the more I force it, the more that barrier is there. And then suddenly there'll be someone asking me to do something and then the idea comes. Our brains are so fickle in the sense that like, sometimes I'll go have a hot shower just so that my mind isn't occupied on something. Yeah. But I was kind of, the thing in the kitchen, are you like cooking at the same time or is it just- No, no, it's just literally, so like, so like a, um, you see like you just got the- the Kitchen thing. island. Yes, like that, that yeah. And just the, the laptop there, the little, um, uh, what's, it, what's the oh, universal the little, audio yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I should I should know what the proper word for that is, uh, but and then two speakers. I bought two nice um, barefoots, the, the smaller ones, because I've got the big ones in the studio. Two bare two barefoots there, and just running my programs because it's easy, just laptop, and then you just and then it just it's come out with you. It's just more fun, and it don't feel like pressure. Don't feel like I'm going to the studio. I'm going over there in that room with, with all the equipment yeah. to do this thing right now. Because pressure. So I'm, I've written songs in the car as well. I got I got a song called Stand Up Tall. I wrote it in the car. <laughs> Oh, I that song, yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> speak Where you that, yeah, I've got a to stand up to Try, Baseline good. junkie, I wrote in the car. Wrote it in the car as really? well. Really? Yeah, I wrote bonkers walking around a hotel lobby in Denver. <laughs> Sometimes it's just. Uh, Where were you? Where were you? In Denver, the Colorado. I was going to say, that's another thing. When we hit different locations, we've done a lot of traveling together, bro. I don't know how many hundred flights we've been on. Yeah. But every time we go somewhere different, it almost like spikes a different sort of creativity. Yeah. So yeah. was that what was happening with you when you're like, you know, so you're in Denver, boom, some people. No, what happened with that is it, it got sent to me by email and I listened to it. I was like, all right, this is like that shit I hated in the 90s when I was a kid. Like, oh, stuff, like all okay. the, the pop kind of housey stuff. But uh, I didn't... I, I don't even know if it was pop. It just reminded me of like Robert Miles and that era, top of the pop. Well, because you come, you're thinking about grime and that usually, right? Before, as in, is it was it hard to get into that? No, I just wasn't into house music. I didn't okay. like house music, but at least by the time I'd been to that to Denver, I'd been to Ibiza once. I'd done Ibiza rocks and that, so I just understood that that culture a bit more of dance music. So I said, like, I. This time I know I can how to deal with this one. And what I knew it was about this time was not rapping too much and not saying, not having a bunch of hard verses where I was just trying to rap at everyone. Look at me, I'm, I can fucking yeah. rap. Look at me, I'm rapping. Can you hear me? Like, <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> which which were, a lot of my early stuff was, especially my second album. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you see people, they're like, they're looking for a bit of a vibe between the words and like, especially if you're in for a lot of people, they've had a pill. And they're like, it's more of a sensory thing, especially I, when we're I talking about that. Yeah. production. I was. You taught me that. Or first super club I went to, bruv. He was like, dude, you got to come. I was like, nah, I, I'm not into that music. Right. I can't, I can't get into that music. Like techno, and there's a few tracks that I like, but I'm like, I can't really get into that. Yeah. Because I like to dance in it. So when every man yeah. is just like this with like he dances, and I'm there just like I'm just, just and absorbing it. it yeah, yeah. In. And I'm like, wow. And like, I've had a. There was one time that kind of revolutionized it for me. It really got me thinking about it. I won't talk about the substance in which I had, but I was at Duke Jumont. Oh, okay. And I was looking at the lights and the, the lasers and the song, and my brain was connecting them together. And I was like, I was thinking in my head, these guys are backstage before the event, talking about what lights and what lasers just for me, just for me to enjoy that moment there. That's where I see. And the, the, it is more than just music. Mm. And that, have you ever noticed when you see like a stand up comedian, they're funnier when you're there. And the music, when you're there, when it's in real life, when you're with other people vibing. Energy, innit? You can watch the funniest stand up at home and you won't get more than like a little yeah. out your nose. But when you're there, you're laughing the atmosphere. and you're taking it all in. Yeah, like, bro, I've, I've got, with, with the live show thing, the way I've been looking at it recently, it's like, rah, those people came out, I don't know them, they don't know each other, and we're all just here. It's a fucking celebration, bro. It's here. Yeah. They listen to these rhythms. They're singing the words word for word. I could, I could be in Australia. I could be in New Zealand. The as far as from here as you can get. 
and they're there, it's going off. Oh, oh, bro. You know what's crazy? I've been going to Australia long. I went to Australia in 2004. So that's one of the first places I went to. So I've just always had a big, big, long fan base there. The the girls are mad, innit? It's beautiful. They're beautiful. (laughs) I've had a lot of fun out there. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I've got Australia my, I've got, great. I've got residency in Australia. My ex was Australian, didn't okay. it? Okay. So I moved out there for that. But then after that, I was like, it's good, it's good times. What's your favorite part of Australia? Um, okay, so city vibes. Yeah. I actually love Melbourne. City. It vibes. took me a minute. I didn't like it as much at first, and now, now I clock it. Okay, it's a bit more like. Yeah, city, but, but yeah. beach vibes, Sydney. 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 Perth has got beautiful beaches. It depends yeah. what vibe you're on because you probably can't party in Perth. You said women wrong, but okay. Yeah, <laughs> and then no, yeah, both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Br- Brisbane yeah. show a lot of love. They're like a young Brisbane. generation. I love Brisbane. Like it's it's that I live in Sydney. I live in Bondi. Like being yeah. British, that's where your English mates are. But yeah, they also probably show a lot of love because you've come such a long way for them. Mm. Like in in London, they say you do uh, an event in like East London, West London. Like when you're coming to us, bro, and you're like it's just around the M25. Right. In Australia, you go to Sydney, someone's gonna fly from Adelaide. Yeah. They're like, oh, Dizzy Ross was in Australia, yeah. yeah. And like the UK, I feel they're such bastards for not traveling sometimes. They're like, nah, nah, I'll give them that, man. Anywhere in the world I go, yeah, there's some Brits. We're the world, the most traveled people, definitely. Anywhere, for, for anything in life, there's always British people always make them, and Nigerians. Nigerians always end up some with people <laughs> as well somehow, man. Well, you but got Brit, half, half Brits, in it. Half well, Nigerian, half, half Nigerian. Nigerian. Yeah, 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 but no, British. Anytime I go, there's there's always a crowd of people. See, I, see my first boy in the corner show. Yeah, there was the one in the copper box, but there was one. The first one was in New York. Oh really? Yeah, and the, yeah, yeah. It would end up being in in Brooklyn because it's because just the way it was set up. They asked first, so it ended up. So then eventually, I had to do one in London, but it's because these people asked to do it. Uh, How many was, people uh, in Brooklyn? That one was it was uh it must have been a couple thousand man. That's mad. It wasn't as big as the um the one in in London in Stratford, but um a lot of I'd say it was majority people British people that flew out for that one. Really? Yeah. Do you do you find it fun and like interesting? Say you're like at an airport somewhere and someone comes over and asks like a selfie and you're like where are you from and they're like oh, I'm from South Korea you're like yes like I'm I'm out there. Do you ever get ones? Do you get inquisitive to that to find out where your music's kind of reached? You know it's crazy not. When I ask them questions, it's not even so much because of my music. I just always ask everyone where they're from, mm, just cool. in general. See, like, I ask you where you're from. I've got, got that from him. Thing. I've got that from him. Yeah. We, we know why we start. We do, yeah, we did that originally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know why you asked that originally, but yeah. then I'm just always so interested where people are from just because I just know how big the world is and I, I always try and connect the dots. I was like, okay, why are you from there? So I know that he said he's Turkish. Yeah. So I, I, I just assumed he was from North London. Like, yeah. not, not to stereotype. No, but, it's true. But, but from, it's yeah, true. I'm from 100%, 100%. He, he gets me to spot Kurdish features. So I chat to someone and I'll be like, you're Kurd? And then sometimes they'll say, no, sometimes they'll say, yeah, I'll go, oh, my mate's Turkish. He gets me to ask that. And again, if I meet someone who thinks African, I'm like, where are you from? Yeah. And they're like, why is this white guy from Windsor asking me where I'm from? This ain't right, but it's interesting. Do you know what's mad? I think you, you think about the white guy from Windsor thing probably more than they do. He's put that on me. Yeah. I put it on him. Yeah, because yeah, he's, he's just fucking with you. I'm fucking but, with yeah, him, yeah. He's just but that. it's because he does the same with other stuff. Right, it's good right, right. Yeah, it's good yeah, yeah that's Because that's everyone, everyone's got their thing in it. But overall, when when you do ask people where they, I find, I always ask people where because I just, it opens things up. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, because then does you get, get into me? a bigger conversation. Or Because I reckon it dictates how I speak to the person, if I'm being honest. So, I would speak to you probably differently or a different angle in a way that you would probably understand knowing you're from it, East. It, 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 Do you know what I mean? No, you, you could probably, you can channel into the East part of yeah. me, but I've fucking been everywhere. Exactly. So that's why so, you can relate to them. Man. Yeah. Because I initially could speak to him, but I didn't understand the culture as much. Right. And now, it's vice versa. He understands my culture even more where I'm from or even like, I don't know, would go somewhere and he'll be like, I've just gone into the hotel room. I've come back outside. Diren's outside in Bali just chatting to all the locals. Like, where does he get this from? Like that street smartness. He sat like, opposite like, stopping the 16 year olds from smoking. <laughs> I come out the hotel and he sat there and he's like nicking the cigarettes, giving them to their dads. Right. But then other times would be somewhere he goes, say, salam alaikum. I go up, I'm like, salam alaikum. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, hello. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's so cool because there's, when you have familiarity with other people, you have a bond straight away. Like when you're a kid on holiday and you're both from the same part of the world, you're like best mates. Yeah, you, and I think it's automatically. But it's nice to have. Like I'll go to places and just where it's just me. I'll be. Sometimes I go on holiday on my own. So when I when I went out to move to Miami, I was by myself. 
No, I made a few phone calls yeah, first. Yeah, Obviously, yeah, I've, yeah. I've got patterned. Like, yeah, 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 go see him, go see him, go see yeah. him. Cool. But then eventually I've made my own friends. And then I'll go Caribbean, meet a bunch of people. I'll go wherever, like, just, and just, yeah, make you, because you're kind of, especially where you're by yourself, you're forced to, there's no one to lean, no one else to lean on. So you're forced to kind of make these interactions. When I was in Australia, when I was living like with my ex and her family and that region, I knew you were massive in Australia because when I got there, I knew you from the UK, yeah. but I didn't think people in Australia did. So when I moved there, I see you coming out for festivals and all that stuff. And then I knew he was huge when someone said, oh, you got the same accent as Dizzy Rascal. And I'd be like, uh, oh my days, bro, this guy's talking That, that would be trippy back then because it wasn't as much, as much social media and that. There wasn't. Yeah. No, that's why for me, I was like, oh shit, he yeah. must be huge there because you were like in their suburbia culture. Yeah. Not like city people. You were like, people in suburbia had your tracks on their Cause radio. Because I, I kept going. Yeah. yeah. You saw the festivals and all my own shows as well as all the festivals. They used to have this wicked traveling festival called Big Day Out. I used to love yeah. that man. Oh my god, so so much good times. And when I'm saying it, it wasn't just the women there. That I know, of course, yeah. Just the old vibe. And my probably my favorite. I saw parts of Australia that you don't get to go to as well. Like I went to Hamilton Island. Oh my god, that that was that was proper. Yeah, that was beautiful. You're going back out uh, end of this year, is it? We, we, uh, it was it was, we're, we're, we're working on it. They're, they're, working, they're working on, on it. Like we'll cut that bit out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, the, the, the plan way. is to be out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, Copy editor. Still... <laughs> Keep it in the bucket, out. man. I, like, I want to go back. I want to go there every year, bro. If I, was, I said, if I could, if, if it weren't so far, I felt I'd have a place there. I, I, I like the Gold Coast. Yeah. First time I went there, I felt like it was like, this is like Miami. In... I, I was literally And the street, that, the yeah. streets are even the same cut yeah, out. And... Yeah, like... um. Uh, blocks, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I love it there. And you got it. the beach; it's chilled. Yeah, nine months of people wearing bikinis. It's sick. It's, and then you've got all the development going on there now. Anyway, and it would have no. But it's non -stop. All that. It's it's uh, it's not. You said you lived in Miami. Did you yeah, live in Miami? yeah, yeah, but yeah. How long? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I still got my places there, and that. But it's just, I just after the pandemic, I just haven't been back. Oh, okay. so but I was there, I was staying there from like twenty ten or end of twenty nine, end of two thousand and nine to. Yeah, 2019. Yeah. Yeah. And when, you're, when, when you've gone out to all these places and like the shows and stuff that you've done and events and everything, you meet, like I've seen you, I was looking on some YouTubes and like you and Shakira, like you've got tracks with big people. That was random. Like, Shakira one happened because she was here and she was working on the track. And I think her driver told her, she was looking for someone, she needed an English feature. No. And her driver told her, you need to get this, you're on school. You need to Shut up. I think that's how that actually happened. That's mad. What's she like in real life? She, bro, she is A1. Again, another person is like, wow. Like she's she seems someone so nice, That's so energy. positive. And obviously, obviously yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but she was with her man at the time as well. And oh, at, that, at, that, at that time, he was, he's, he's, nah, he was, he was the son of Argent, the Argentinian president's son or something like I'd that. I'd look him in the eyes and just go, well done. <laughs> well done. You know what I mean? Yeah, but he, even him, he was just positive, he was just cool. I was just, I was in my own studio, we was just in the studio in South, and then we got a phone call saying, yeah, yeah Shakira wants to do, a wants to work with you. I said, yeah? He said, yeah. I said, I said, when? He said, now. I said, all right. And just went. Oh, so you just met her like quickly that day? That night, went there to the studio, recorded, that's one of the few times I do like recording in the studio. So I went when there, recorded with her. Did it within an hour or two or something like that. It was all good. That was that. And I didn't see her again until I performed with her at the MTV Awards in Madrid or something like that. Maybe like a year later. That is mad, love. Do you ever have these times where like, we have this period in 2018 when we were coming up, we were skint, we were broke. We shared a twin room in Bali. Yeah, and cool. like, it was like 20 pound a night. And we look back to it and go, we were like buzzing about it. Do you reminisce at the times like LA before social media, Miami back then? What's your what's your golden period that you like? You sit there and you go, ah, oh, where is it? I'd say the early early years. So like from two thousand and four up to like two thousand and six. Nah, but if I'm being honest, I'd say two thousand and three. Even some of the the uh, before our bus, two thousand and three. Up to 2014 or something, because w w when bonkers and all that hit, hey, that, that yeah, shit was man. great too. Because you're you're in all these other spaces where it's just positivity, it's just it's just niceness, it's just it's mainstream. Yeah, it's happy, it's all happy. Some of the earlier stuff was a bit techy, like it could get a bit. Did you get any hate from that? 
from the man them. Not yeah. hate, but like... Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, were, yeah, they, were, they, were they upset? You get the whole thing, uh, sell out, or you left the scene and all that uh, other shit there. You get, you get some of that, but... It's hard because it makes them feel like... Without knowing it, when you go up, it makes them feel like they're not accomplishing anything. And it's a very hard emotion for people to deal with. Even something as small as... Fuck them, fuck that. <laughs> fuck their emotion. <laughs> I've dealt with all that. I don't give a shit. It's, it's 2022, bro. You have, you have to actually get up in your ass and just do shit. You, you not liking what someone's done because it makes you uncomfortable will get you far on social media to the extent, mm. but it won't... It, well, it, it could get you further, maybe, maybe causing passer, but it's not going to necessarily elevate you and if if you'd if you'd been in the same position, you wouldn't be thinking like that. So that's why if you are in that position, you can't let people, you can't let what they don't know because their lack of experience stop you or slow you down. Because I've had plenty of times where I've been like not happy about that, or trying to please everyone and do everything. You, know, you don't get no thanks for it. And you got you got to put yourself first because ultimately, what people don't realize is if you put yourself first, you do well. That brings up the people truly around you, the people that are your close friends, family, whatever. You elevate yourself, you bring them with you. you. You haven't got time to... You can. Sometimes that gets ticky as well. Some people just don't appreciate shit, bro. Sometimes you can help people, yeah? And they can resent you for being in the position to help them. I feel that. Life's mad, mean. bro. I don't know what you mean. People get... They don't, know, they don't know how to deal with it. They don't know how to deal with that situation. And remember I told you, one of my friends, I was like, when we were doing events, all this like online coaching stuff, I was like trying to drag like my boys into like seminars. I'm like, come here, we're doing a seminar. It costs like 500 pound. I'm getting all my boys in so you guys can learn about this stuff. And one of my friends just stopped me. He was like, bruv, not everyone can ride your wave. Just let him be. And I was like, yeah, but like he's got so much potential. They don't want the help. But then you learn to like, yeah. you know what, fuck it. Just, just get on with it. And you see that. And you make other people, you meet other people and you meet people who are, who are doing better and bigger than you and you then you can start being sure okay what are they doing that i'm not and you learn sometimes they let they, they let you in the circle to do what, what they're doing you clock it or, or you know what i mean you just meet other people you get on with it and you can keep friends certain friends who've got an understanding of who you are and why you two work as friends i've got certain friends that i grew up with that i still check for and we can still roll we don't see each other all the time we can still roll because we're gonna buck up with each other and we're just gonna cuss each other. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what that's what the thing is. For two hours, we're gonna be gunning each other. <laughs> hey, that is like, that is exactly we. That's we, it. We we go to like during when lockdown after lockdown. Silence. You wasn't. Oh, sorry. You wasn't here. But we went to IB for it. Me, Alima, and like we got a, a Nigerian brother with an Irish accent. Yeah. We got my boy Ali. He's like. Yay, tall, but big Ali. Then we've got a tall white friend, we call him tall white, and then we've got like a Welsh guy with a Swedish accent. Yeah, and we just burn each other for four days. And you can bro. have all the banter that you that you've just, if you said it online, bruv, game of it's the your deepest insecurities, yes. <laughs> and that sometimes that's what's a little bit sad about social media. Yeah, is that like, but then that's what's amazing about things like the Chappelle show. Mm. Yeah, that yeah, covered all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That's that. It's in a certain comedy you couldn't even have in this day and age. Or well, you I could turn it down, bro. When I came back from the holiday, I started talking to someone normal that I've just met. And I started bantering him. I was like, "Oh my days, I've got to break this." It's time. crazy, like it's people's get offended. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you yeah. get it out. You've been PG all that. You're going on TV. You got. I think we both got told off once for saying the word "piss" on TV. Yeah. It was piss. So I I came off this morning last week, and they go, "James, you swore on TV." I went, "No, I didn't." I mean, you said the word piss, and I was like, shut up. I did that on this morning. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. Mate, and I was yeah, like, this morning, well, I watched it. Yeah. 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 And, and I was like, same. and afterwards, I was like, you guys mental. That's not a swear word. I was like, if you were with me and the boys, you'd yeah. cancel me yeah. 500 times over. Trust me, man. Trust I me. I miss that school. Like, I would make great content. Yeah. The, I miss that playground stuff. You just can't say it anymore. Even in between us. I watched that the other day. I was watching one of the old episodes. You know, even there's bits in it where they go, oh, say something. You're like, well, you couldn't say that anymore. No, you couldn't. You could have, maybe, maybe, maybe it's good to not make people feel alienated and upset and all that as well. It's, it's, it's a fine balance, but that's why you'll just you have to make sure you've got your social groups where you can call each other a cunt for whatever reason and whatever and wind each other up. But you know, as well, like sometimes certain scenarios where people don't say things to be nice to someone, for example, hey, would you like to come to lunch? No, because I don't like you. I'm not going to come to lunch. Bro. Oh, <laughs> no. do you know what I mean? But get like, it out, get it no, out. It's yeah. true. But do you know what? What's the point of like wasting energy or kind of? leading them on in a way where 
that's going to lead to other shit that's going to... That might lead you. to a fight depending on the, depending the person. On who, if they're as angry as you. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean, bro? I'm pretty sure some Europeans, I'm not sure if it's like the Dutch or the German. Russians, bro. They're very, they're very much, they'll Polish. just say no. Yeah. I'm Polish. Hey, do you yeah, want to yeah. come for lunch? So there's people that don't understand why English culture is to beat around the bush. We say, oh yeah, we, like they say, we we say we're going to link each other. We're going to see you soon. We, I don't plan to. The amount of times we say, please, sorry, if you don't mind, would it be possible to uh, just go over here so I could please use this Fam, I did that the other day. I was in an aisle somewhere and I went, oh, sorry. Like, I just approached, she said, oh, sorry. And so we just, why did we just both just say sorry? <laughs> you just, that's what we did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, in a bit, in a bit. When? Yeah. You're, <laughs> when you watch an American TV show, they're like, hey, pass me the coffee. And you're like, you're not going to say please? Please, like, yeah. But it just, or, or sometimes my kids, like, um, um, I'll get onto them. But, but, but they're actually right. You ask them a question, oh, do you want something? They say, no. And they say, no, thank you. <laughs> but, but that's not what you asked them, did it? You did the right thing, man. Our kids are, bro. Fucking, that's another thing that's like having kids is bit, that's Question. been a highlight. Yeah. I want kids in it. Yeah. I want kids. Right? Do it. But you know when everyone's like, don't they do stress that's the perfect time, the perfect this. I I believe there isn't a perfect nah, time. I don't know. What would you say about it? Like, what would you say about it? Say if you weren't in the, I'm not sure when you had your kids, yeah. but I don't, maybe it might one, have been one, before. One's, one's uh, coming up to two and not one's three. Okay, so you're in a place like financially, you're kind of okay to have kids. Right? Yeah, yeah. Compared to what people Wh say. Which, which is nice to be able to buy them yeah. anything you, anything they need. They need, but it's usually you buying them everything that you want them to have. Like yeah. my son didn't need a Lamborghini <laughs> car thing and the and the Range Rover and a G wagon and a motorbike and the whatever. I like to see him in and a Ferrari. Yeah. <laughs> and feel, he didn't need that. Okay, and they get bored of it. They will equally play with the cardboard box. Yeah, happily or bubble wrap. Yeah, yeah. So, but would would that have changed your mind in having kids? Say if you weren't in that financial position, maybe because because. I don't know. Last time I weren't in that final, so I was a bit young when I weren't in that final. So I would it was when I was younger, and I've yeah, had yeah. a couple of little situations when yeah, I was yeah, younger. Yeah. Like I don't want to get too into it, but I've almost had kids when I was like when, when I was fifteen and when I was uh, seventeen. Yeah. So at them times, yeah, I was. I don't think that would have been the that greatest, been right? Cause because of mentally where I was or what I was trying to do that. Like, but any any time, I, I could probably have had kids earlier. Thinking about it now, maybe five years ago. That's what it. that's what I've heard people say. I, they're, they're like, I could have done it when I was younger or, you know, you want the energy, you want to be around them. And I'm always doing this countdown <laughs> thing in my head where I'm like, my mum and dad had me when they were like 37, 38. Yeah. And my dad wasn't kicking footballs around the garden with me. Now you're tired, bro. When I'm especially chasing after two of them, it's tiring, bro. You don't listen. <laughs> and they're trying to get us to do their thing. But you know, what's really important though, if if you can just have a good relationship with the uh, with, with their, their mum. Yeah. Whatever it's like. Because when that, when that goes wrong, bro. That's when it creates stress. Bro, it's not the one. If not even like for you. I yeah. thought I knew what baby mum, when I used to do the man who was talking about baby mum, driver, baby father driver. Oh, fam. I, I, it was just, a, it was like a phrase that I just used to hear. I used to baby mum driver. You thought yeah, it was yeah. funny. It's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. It can go so left and so mad and so unreasonable. And it's just. And you got to forget the situation of you and a baby mom, right? You, you have to that. focus on the kids yeah, yeah. while sometimes their their mum is doing a mad thing and just yeah. trying to, and, and you can't even fight because the perceptions, it's just trying to argue, like, but she did this, 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 that, like, forget it. Like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. like, and you just, you just have to just try and even when they're being real unreasonable, Got in their head, they don't think they're being unreasonable. So, so yeah. you have to make a and some bro, the, the other big thing as well that it has to be said, yeah. As I feel for that, it doesn't get talked about enough in the media and that that there's a lot of man, women too, but there's a lot of man fighting for their kids, bro. Like fighting for their kids, it's not funny. I've been through it now. I've seen where it is. Luckily, because of my position and like funds or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can fight it. But it takes funds, and there's a lot of man going through hell right I think now. A lot of man go through that for kids, but I think in general, I think there's a lot of stuff happening with men that isn't spoken enough. Or no, true. Speak about. But you see that one? Yeah, that's how you rip the guts out of people. Trust like, oh, me, man. that's that's you. People talk about mental health. Yeah, what that can do to a man that's trying to try doing everything to try and fight to see their kids. Yeah, because that's coming identity. up against. Yeah, coming up against a brick. 
Bro, the love you have for your kids. I've heard people say it. It's unlike something. Not, it's un, what's it called? It's unlike nothing. The way you love them, use. So you and their, you and their mum can whatever it can go wrong. Whatever, there will always still be a bit of love for, for that person there because yeah. you've got memory. You got you remember when times were good. But then there's they come. You come to a bit like that where it's just there's no reason, especially when lawyers and everything starts getting involved when you're oh, doing that way. Get, that's it's, stressful. Yeah. And they're just trying to do their job. I've definitely at times de definitely wanted to do something mad to the uh, lawyer on the other side. Like, yeah, but, yeah. They, but they're doing their job. It is where it is, but it can get very foul and very dark. But I'm telling you, when 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 this man trying to fight to, for their for their kids, I felt it now. And and when you go through it, you don't really, the people come out of the woodwork and tell you how much man is suffering. And people, so, some man haven't seen their kid for two two three five years because they didn't have the funds to keep going. Okay. Or or, or or the situation just got manipulated so bad by the other side yeah that it just was so overwhelming i'll be like bro it's the most evil and heart-wrenching feeling you'll have when you know you can't see your kids bro i'm telling you it's fucked and there's a lot of man right now the the, the conversation is that oh, there's all sorts of conversations going on yeah, in the yeah. middle of that but that conversation is not there and what what there is right now in the in the um children um uh, in the family court thing is a massive backlog of oh. people waiting to even try to get to court. So they can then appeal to see their kids. To even try and even see okay. their kids. Like, and I say it costs money you think and it's a long process. Back. You say you've blown your ACL, you've got to wait six months. Yeah, cool. You you might not be training in your favorite sport, but if you can't see your kid or go to court for six months, bro. like when you think about identity, like obviously we all have our own identities. When you become a father, I can only imagine what that's like to strip a man of that. Cause we have things that make us manly. Like even, I know people are going to be like, oh, you're gender profiling. I love buying dinner. Right. right. If I get dinner for my friends, I walk really? away like, well, not for you. <laughs> but you walk away like, yeah. I worked, I worked hard, I can afford this, this is my pleasure. And you walk away feeling like a man. When you look after your kids or whatever, when someone pulls that from out from underneath you. Yeah. Fam, I'm telling you, man, that that one there, I actually would not wish on that on my worst enemy. Really? You bro, because you so you go through things like like, wow, well, by the time I do see my kids again, my, are they even gonna no, yeah, yeah. Like, is he even gonna care? You don't know. And mine wasn't that long. That it, not, it was long. It was hell. But like I said, there's man that not seen their kids for years, and some they have to go and have kids with someone else. Sometimes that's what that's about because your people don't. Understand, you're mourning. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I don't think these like they've got their idea about doing that. Yeah. For what for whatever their reasons are. Sometimes they've they've they've, they've got good enough reasons. Like yeah. I understand, but that that one there that will make a man kill himself or kill someone else. Yeah. Like it's a lot. Right, a question: lot. What 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 tips would you give to a guy that's thinking about having a, a kid with someone? If if you were like to avoid those stresses, if you were to do the do that again, not saying as mm. like you regret what you did, but I'm saying, what tip would you give someone in the sense of if you were to have a family with an individual, what would you say to them? That's a tough one because you never know what can happen. Sometimes having a kid changes the dynamic. Okay, like shit can be just oh, they, they can change. Everything or, can change. Or you can change. Yeah, maybe because they like, like and that's why I can't come on here and be like, she did this. Yeah, of course. Be because some, we're all in our own heads and our own existence. We don't know how you're coming across. You've got your idea how you think you are. She might be justified in thinking the way I behaved in certain things. It's like, you know what I mean? So, but when you bring kids, kids change the dynamic. Like it changes them physically, your mentally, emotions they're, they're going through, yeah. So sleep like, deprivation, all, that's all enough sorts. to send anyone. Man. Yeah, stress, little things, your tired thing, like, it's, it's a lot. So you can clash and, but, so what, I, I, don't, I don't, if I'm being honest, as, mu as mad as it's been, I still don't know what I would change. I would just, okay, okay. maybe just. That's good. Yeah, because last, it, my, my, my situation is, it's, uh, it's tricky. There's, there's a lot to it. Yeah. Unfortunately, a lot more than what's been flung out there. So it's hard to explain it without divulging too much and yeah. muddying the waters. It's nice to see your passion come across because the reason that you're getting fired up here is the love for your kids. F fully. But when, my, and my point for this in the beginning was not to just have a rant. It was to just, the joy and how calm I am because I fought. Like I fought <laughs> like to, to, to do it. And if I'm being honest, the system was good to me. Like, so I'm in a much better place and just being able to just be with your kids, however many days or how much to whatever time you've got yeah. with them and putting proper time in with them and, all that, and seeing that 
that uh just seeing them grow and having influence on them and just watching them and that there's nothing better not music not money there's nothing is better than that because we spoke nothing. about hanging out with snoop dogg we spoke about o2 all of this you came to life when your kids got involved and that's what i Bro. like to see because it was actually quite endearing to to feel that because passion like it's it's a strong emotion i saw it coming out then you then it might have seemed like ranting you've actually made me more excited to have children because right. i want to be that fired up about something bruv it's the best it's actually the best and i, I was there for both of my kids births i was there like live <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what my yo bro my, my son yeah he was born with 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 the i swear around his neck his, his mom don't even know that it was like we in between me and the doctor that one I had to be super calm or shitting myself and but was still calm like, like, ha, 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 it's all so good. And then eventually they sorted it out. Oh, I, was out. But I was there. Every every scan, everything, I was there for all that. So I enjoyed that whole Trying thing. Trying to imagine that happening. You're like, hey, doctor, sort that out now. Yeah, and he's a, he's a, gee, he's a seasoned guy, the guy who did that, man. He, uh, but, um, I don't think there's, it sounds weird, but I've even had kids and I've said this multiple times to people, and especially when I hear someone that doesn't want to have kids, I personally don't get it. I'm always like, what other purpose do you have as a man? You know, uh, I, I, no, everyone... Uh, uh, at their different times because when when I was like 25 like I could, what what no way and as it started going as I started getting older and older I started thinking about it hmm what would that be like it went from hmm, what would that be like to oh okay well, that would be nice <laughs> to oh man I need to have kids to like, <laughs> oh I can't stay here in Miami no more man <laughs> need to have it hello hello <laughs> that's what I was going to say I had my phone I need to, for yeah that. I need to get and then trust me it, everything you've been through it, it's worth it and time time Time's a healer, man. You can go through the worst. and But as long as you put your kids first, I think that's why I'm able to just still be carry on and still be in a good mood and still get on with what I'm getting on with, man, even though it's chaos. Are they going to be Are they gonna be at the L2? Probably not. Okay. No, nah, probably right. not. But hopefully by the time I have a next one, like, yeah. <laughs> they'll be there okay. doing their thing. Yeah, man. And music-wise, what's... On it. You're on, on it. You... you know, it's mad. I've actually been holding back bits. Like, I've got stuff there while I was thinking of the right time and then you start thinking well when is the right time there there is I'm excited that. I'm excited I like every, everyone feels like they've done stuff too late mm. don't they every always feels that way and you're like, oh if I hadn't done this earlier but like it's almost like the beautiful thing that brings everything together and also let's say you go through good things in your life you go through bad things in your life you actually need those things to formulate where you are today mm. if everything had been smooth sailing in other areas of your life you right. might not be the person you are trust me yeah everything is when things are dark, dark, like, ah, like, what the fuck is this? Like, of course, it's the worst. But after you go through it, it's just you've got a wealth of experience to eventually, like, rah, now I've actually got someone to pass it or help or yeah. guide to give, like, when they get older, they'll, the world will be different then, but the, the certain things that will still be the same. So I'm learning, but at least I've got somewhere to put it now. Other than just look, it's me. I'm rapping again. Go on, yeah, do you want yeah, it? Yeah. There's more purpose. Yeah, come there's to my show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hello, hello. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> nah, it's like nah. I've got I've got responsibilities now. I've got to be home. Like I've got to be there. I need to yeah. help out. And you just, and and you just love. I've got a boy and a girl. And before when I was when I was having a thought, I was loving. I was thinking about oh, rah. I thought I thought, oh, I thought I'd have a boy. Like, yeah. But when she was born. That's that's yeah you know I mean that's what I mean. Then you have a boy, it's like rah, it's a little just it's, it's Bro, just someone to look girl. after her when she's older. Yeah, if I have a door, oh my days, no boyfriends till you're 28, bruv. You 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 think that yeah, but then sometimes you just you just leave leave them. We just like uh, just they boss you about, bro. I, I've I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it from my boys. I have seen it, and I see the I see I see the love that they have for their daughters. And every time I do make that joke or whatnot. They, they don't even think about it because you just want them to be happy, right? Yeah. So it's quite... No, but no, but they actually run you. <laughs> they actually run you. Like, I can't really tell my daughter nothing really. Like, and, and see, it's funny because they'll just grab you. They want you to come see something and they'll just grab you and just drag you. It's like, yeah, come here. Nah. Or or she'll say, do this. I just put my hand towards or whatever it is. Yeah, you do it. Bossing you about. You know, yeah. you guys are from like, obviously what I would call hood yeah. in London. What does it come, this is a very interesting question. When it comes to like putting your kids in school, mm. like you must be torn because you're like, if I put them in a private school, fair enough, I know the education can be better, but they're gonna be hanging out with some dickheads wearing like Ralph Lauren polos to train in the gym. And then you're like, but if I send them to the school that I went to, there might be people that I had to grow up with, the similar kind of people that aren't yeah. nice people because their parents are going through shit. And do you, I know it's 
premature to think about this. Do you have to kind of worry, like looking, that's what made me who I am, but I've now got myself to a position that maybe I could have, you know, never have dreamed of when I was younger. Is that a, a Bro, problem? that's that's mad that you should say that because it's true. You think about that because the schools that I went to actually just got better and better and academically and just resources wise is actually everything you'd want for Even your kids. in those areas, right? That's the thing, you're not sure, because yeah, it's, yeah. it's still a bit wild, like, <laughs> it goes down there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, you, they're not me. I grew up there, I know how to manoeuvre that here. Yeah. Sometimes I was part of the, the problem there. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So like, it's like, ah, you don't want that for them. But at the same time, putting them in some blue blood prep school, this might, might be as damaging as well. That's like, because culturally, it's, it's not your culture, it's not your, this, they don't even know necessarily know how to deal with you or be around you or so you have to you have to make that choice. Okay, well, what is more important? That what's the most important thing then? I think family is the most like as in I think if you're in their case, I think even like say my parents, although I wasn't raised in Turkey, I was raised here, but through them, mm. I saw I guess their struggles or learned from their struggles yeah. and then kind of applied it with what I'm doing now. So if I was to have a kid, I'm like. Okay, you going? To, I'll, I'm gonna send them public school. I don't want no private thing. Because if I'm being really honest, like, I don't think school is everything, anything anyway. Well, not anything, but like everything anyway. Well, I've got two GCSEs. Well, well that, yeah, but and, and then that's the problem we got as well. That's yeah, you're right. Like, mean, let me not cut. Let me finish. No, 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 finish no, no, no. All good. But what I'm saying is like, I did. I feel like I did okay, and I'm gonna do better yeah. with my life experiences. But I think most importantly, if they are a good human, that's not evil then they're going to do well either way. As long as the parents are onto them. My dad was onto me. Ooh, you know what the area was like? I had so much shit happening around me. My dad was onto me. You're going football. Yeah. You're going football. I'm playing keep, out there. Keep dad. you in those extra I'm going to Beckton. He's like, no, you're not. You're going training. Yeah. And I'm Sick. Like, do you know what I mean? So it was onto me like that. And sport kind of helped me with that. And I'll, I'll try and do the same, I guess. I but but when you were you talking about the, um, cause that's, that's another big element as well. It's tough for me to push school and education on them when when I, the one thing I gave a shit about which was music is what I ended up doing at a bus mm -hmm. I've done all right so I I haven't got that experience of like yes academic this that I didn't know I got kicked out of a bunch of schools and I've never had a job no I've got a job I don't want to downplay what I do it's a no, job no, course, no, but not like I haven't course. had a nine to five or I, I didn't have to go college yeah, 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 to yeah, yeah. study and work my way up and, all, you know and this I mean? is really one of the first generations where or probably like the one for us as well you had people on TV before but social media and music is now in an echelon that was never there mm. like so now we've got a lot of people that are probably going through these issues where one thing as well is it, it's an important conversation to talk about what school you go to but again People now, they're like, oh, kids are overweight, kids are this, and they're blaming the schools. I'm like, you can't expect someone on 25 Gs a year to care about 30 people that much. Like you say, it's so much about the parents. Yeah, 100%. But then you're like, you're looking at two completely different but Yeah, worlds. but even with the parents though, sometimes, yeah, but if the parents are trying their hardest to fucking work and all that as well, it's so, t and then the wages are not going up. As, so, so, some people are just in the position, they still manage to get the kids out to private school. They work to work three jobs. My mom's wondering why she would work three jobs. Some people get their parents, they do a bunch of jobs, whatever. But if you just don't come from a family of, of money to be able to do that to your your kids anyway, it's tough. So it's, some people have really got it against them. Like it's tough out I, here. Bro. I think it comes from like, if, if you come from struggle, right? Or your family's come from struggle, they're used to that stress of struggle. Mm. Majority of stress is, middle class or upper class have are not real stresses to the people that struggle all the time. So with that sort of pressure, having kids, but my granddad had 11 kids. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and I know people, my cousins that have got multiple kids with bailiff at the door or yeah, running a shop, that. running this. Yeah. And they're doing all right. I feel like what happens is the adults or say us, for example, we might be worried about cutting out our luxuries to give more time to say the kids or the things that make create character in the struggles that they have. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So, sometimes, sometimes it's a bit of that. But if, if you've actually got, if you've got no luxuries, you because you need, you still need to put your, you know I mean, do something Self for yourself. If you don't, you're just miserable. Because then, then that's, that's even worse. Okay, you're providing everything for, for your kid, yeah? But you're just an asshole to them. Okay, you're, question. Because you're not happy. Question. Yeah. That's for us, right? Mm. But would your mum would have said the same thing? She comes from where, where is she was she the Ghanaian? She's or Ghanaian, no? yeah. Okay, and she came. But she, she migrated. Was stressed or she was a lot. Born? She oh, came, okay. came from where she was. She was stressed a lot. Now okay. I'm older. I can see it. It's like sometimes she's just a yeah. bit short. 
She's working too much jobs. She, she could do, but she she showed me love. She kept me, took me with her everywhere. She loved, but she I didn't see her have like loads of fun. She's made sacrifices. She didn't party all the time. She did all this so so. Yeah, it would have okay. been part side of yeah, her life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm older. I'm thinking, right, oh, that would have been uncomfortable. That 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 weren't nice. You probably have I mean? more respect for your mom now, innit? I'll oh, de definitely, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I, I patted my mom from years ago. Yeah, always, yeah. I've always made sure I look after my mom. You know what I mean? Because as they get older, I mean, you have to, you have to start looking after. They get ill. Like everyone gets ill, but you know what I mean? It's, 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 of things, things change. Time is valuable. Yeah, right? man. Trust. It's, it's a crazy one as well. Like, say you, let's say, next five years things go really well. Kids start growing up. Now you got another problem where you're like, I tried so hard to provide for my kids, they got too much. Now I got, oh, dad, can I drive your car? Then you're like, no, <laughs> get your own. That's yeah, the Windsor you. talking because no one knew where we're from. <laughs> yeah. that like, that's, yeah. I hear you. I, I, I hope to have them problems too. Like, cause you just make them, it's look, you know, it comes to a point where you have to make them understand the importance of like earning. Mm. And I, I, I don't necessarily think that's even a class thing. Cause my mom used to make me um, work for whatever you. Yeah, she did. She, she, well, she gave me the chance to get involved. I can't work out whether I was forced or was <laughs> <laughs> But like, I did, um, I guess it was laboring. So she'd come and get, there'll be like 20 boxes of envelopes and you had to stick the things in the envelopes. It'd be up all, all day or things doing that. <laughs> Shit like, I know. I hate it, bro. But, and then selling clothes on the estate and things like that. So mum was so close on the estate. We should go to Slough, I think it was, or South or one of them. There was like these these warehouses, or no, they were uh, not warehouses, what are they called again? Uh, not cash and carries. What does, what? What are they called? Wholesalers. So I get yeah, the wholesale yeah, yeah. clothes and that. And then eventually I started selling them on my own. I was yeah. making so I've, that instilled thingy. Or, but, then, but then she also made me follow her to, to church. So, I've, so we're from East, but she dragged me all the way to Brixton to go to church. Like, this used to be a church by the, on, on the road by the police station. So was Sunday, every Sunday, it's like three buses or something. And then sometimes she'd go to these ones, she's proper Christian, so I'd go to these ones, there'll be some, some like, uh, celeb pastor come in and they'll be doing like a, like, like a big madness. Like yeah. a big festival weekend. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, not yeah. festival, but like, yeah, like the WWE of like, pastors and all that. <laughs> and they're doing a few days. So then you have to go there and it's a late one. Yeah. So, then, like, so now I'm thinking, okay, I was able, when I was making Boy on the Corner, I was able to stay in the studio late with Cage, with whoever else was there, yeah, Wiley, yeah, yeah. Roll Deep, whatever, till six in the morning, because I was already kind of geared for it. Like I'd already done that from young. Yeah. So no, there's little things you. that your parents in, instill in you. I'm, the hustle. I'm not gonna lie, yeah. man. When I'm flying business, I'm like, you lot are sitting in economy. You're yeah. sitting in economy. You, you won't do that. That's it. You know what? <laughs> you, like, you know what? Uh, I, I don't want to do that. Stay close to dad. That. Nah. Holding hands with him. But for the long run, I'm like, I need to do that. Nah, for them. bruv. You'll feel like a don when your kids are sitting in there. When, <laughs> when you're flying, <laughs> you when you're flying out. With you yeah, bro. <laughs> what, your kids in economy, dickhead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, you know what I was saying yeah. to him earlier? Random one. Every, well, this was years ago. I heard you say this. The last five years, he's always gone, Gucci. I've gone, Gucci. Like that, right? Yeah. And I clocked. I have got that off you when you on Jonathan Ross and when he oh, asked yeah. you what you got on and you went Gucci and I was like oh shit I remember that, that. and I yeah, got that yeah. from Gucci man I think oh is it for real oh, there you go. somewhere one of them things there yeah man good times bro trust so you're gonna be at the old 2 yeah it's been I'm real having you on bro nah it's, it's, it's been it's proper been... chat but this is how shit should be in it but it's just it's conversation just yeah man we, we'll do this again once when you're free with some drinks and cigars. And next time I'll be in shorts. Yeah, 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 yeah. okay. Mate, it's been like, it's been insane for us to, when we found out we're doing a pod with both of us for buzzing. So exciting, the group man. chat was lit. Yeah, lit. yeah it, it was wicked, lit. Man. And I'm glad, I've, I hope you enjoyed this as much as nah, well. Nah, proper, man. I'm glad, it, I'm, glad, I'm glad it went well. <laughs> Make sure you buy tickets for the show. We'll put a link in the bio. DZ hasn't announced it yet, but he said I'm hosting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're you're, you're okay. definitely there, bro. You're definitely there, man. Thank you guys for listening. See you guys soon. Yes, Cheers, man. Love, bro.